All right, so it is now time to install our first control surface, and that is going to be the elevator. The elevators come pre-assembled from Titan, as you can see, just like this. And so what we need to do now that we have our horizontal stabilizer complete is we need to be able to put the hinges on. So we just set up the inner hinge assembly, as you saw, and it's now time to set up the outer hinge. I've drawn a center line right down this. This is our hinge plate. And the hinge plate is now going to get aligned and mounted right here. Now there's going to be two of them. One of them goes here and the other one is going to go to the outermost rib this way. We're going to, it, it all goes then through a pin. As you can see, there's a hole here. It's going to go in through that pin and then there's a slot right here. And that's where the inner hinge plate rides right through there. So let's get all this mounted in place and move ahead and have our first control surfaces in place. All right, so moment of truth now to mount the left elevator in place. So uh, what I've done is I've taken the pin that goes through the uh, hinge point. I put the outer hinge on because we're going to actually align it when that's in. It's the inner hinge that we mounted to the uh, horizontal stabilizer now. And so let's get this mounted in place and see how it works. Now the elevators on the T51D Mustang can be either fabric covered or they can be aluminum covered. Now since our aircraft is going to be kept outside, we opted for aluminum skins. And so what we need to do is we need to be able to pull out some of the gussets, which are the supporting structures made for the fabric, and then mark where all the holes are going to be. We're going to drill, bond, and rivet on the elevators. Now on the right side elevator, we have a trim tab. The trim tab is electrically operated, and so that presents a little bit of an additional wrinkle for us. So we need to be able to cut out from this aluminum skin that comes pre-bent from Titan Aircraft. We need to cut that section out for that trim tab. So we need to mark it and one of the tricks that we're using here is taping on some poster board and actually cutting out carefully where the hole is going to be for the actuation rod and where the notch is going to be for that trim tab. That way we can kind of practice on that and then transfer where that location is to the skin because once we cut we can't put aluminum back on. So let's get to work and get the elevators done on our T51D Mustang.
So the trim tab here is driven by this uh, rod. The rod is contained within a motor that spins and actually extends and then retracts the rod. And what we had to do was make an opening for that rod to come out. That was a little bit tricky in order to find the right location and then make enough room to kind of see how is the rod move as it extends and retracts. But that's another area that will will finish off and we may even make a fairing for that later on that lets the airflow go by it uh, without getting kind of getting caught in here. But that's what this mechanism is here and that's what moves the, uh, ele the uh, elevator trim tab right here. All right, so it took a lot of steps to incrementally open up the cutout that we needed to have in place here for this trim tab, just to make sure that everything was about as perfect as we were gonna be able to get it. So that's now done, and what we now have to do is first transfer some of the existing holes from the rivets that were there before that we removed over to the new skin. And that's done with a tool from Aircraft Tool Supply called a strap duplicator. A strap duplicator is this uh, tool here made of some very uh, strong but flexible spring steel that has on one side of it a pin that goes into the existing hole. Then it straddles essentially the uh, skin and then has a bushing that you can drill through to get the hole in exactly the right location. So what we can then do is we can slide that into where those existing holes were, where the gussets were in place on the elevator. Those gussets were there for the fabric, should we have chosen to go with fabric. They're now removed. We're gonna transfer that to the aluminum skin. And then once those are all in place, we're gonna use this other tool, which is called a rivet fan or rivet spacing tool. And we're going to set those uh, spacing points to one and a half inches in between each of the rivets and then go along each of the rib lines so that we can get everything in place. Then the last step that we'll do is actually going and putting a curve to the very front of the skin so that it, it holds tight to the, uh, the front part of the elevator, which is actually a tube. So let's get to work on that part. Now the forward spar of the elevators is a tube and therefore it's important that we have the skin conform to the tube at the forward edge. There's a few different ways of doing this, but the most eloquent way is to use this tool, which is called a bead roller. It has two dies at the end that form a curve and you can uh, choose different dies to get exactly the right radius that you're looking for. So it's very simple to use. I'm gonna take this piece of scrap metal, I'm gonna feed it through here and then just carefully pull through. And then what you can see, if I bring this up close, is that it has this beautiful curve now 
that has been put right into the uh, aluminum. So we're going to do that on our elevator skins, which have all been fit. They're ready to go. I'm going to enlist some help from Heidi to make sure that it goes straight and true and that everything works out. And then we will be all set to apply the adhesive and do our final riveting and complete the elevators. Okay, so we just uh, finished doing these six, and Jojo, you basically did all of it. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. All looks very nice, very flush, and I'm really happy with the result. Do you have fun? Yeah. Nice. So yeah, this is done. On to the next project. So here we are now with a completed set of elevators that are mounted and are really ready to go. The skins are in place, everything's done, and it's really exciting to see how this control surface runs all the way to the cockpit. Um, it's, uh, it really just kind of brings to life the aircraft a little bit more. Next, we can go past this stage, hook up the rudder pedals to the actual rudder control, and really get to see how a lot of these controls are gonna actually feel from the cockpit. So we love any stage that results in something that really looks completed and makes us start 
to visualize the aircraft as it's uh, getting closer and closer to seeing an airport and I appreciate you joining me along the way for this journey. So again for Social Flight I'm Jeff Simon. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps. We have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, places to go, things to do, everything you can imagine all in one app. And that even includes our Fly to Win Challenge with prizes that we give away. I believe we gave away over $50,000 in prizes last year and we're on a uh, schedule to probably do the same this year so please join it check it out there is so so much to do and it's growing all the time until next time I'm Jeff Simon blue skies <laughs>